Hello and welcome to another 3ABN Today program. I'm Jason Bradley and I'm excited about today's program because my guest today is a young person that's on fire for the Lord. And wait until you find out exactly where he is practicing evangelism. My guest today is Daniel Fukuda and he's from with the Japan Union Conference with the Youth Rush Japan Project. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> Before we get into your journey and your testimony, we're going to be blessed in song by John Stoddart singing I am yours. Jesus. 
Jesus, I just want to thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. It's been so good to me. I thank you, Lord. Jesus, I just want to thank you. Wow, what a beautiful song, I Am Yours. And, and most of the lyrics is, Jesus, I just want to thank you. Yeah. You know, how we have so much that we should be thankful for. Oh, yes. The Lord spared no expense in uh -huh. saving us. Uh -huh. And so we need to give him all the thanks that we can give him. Yeah. Um, Daniel, I'm so excited to have you here because I think what you're doing in Japan is amazing. But for our viewers that don't know, what is the Youth Rush Japan Project? Ah. Youth Rush Japan, it's basically, simply put, it's youth rushing. Okay. That's what it is. Uh, okay. uh, why does youth have to rush? Well, uh -huh. it's because we believe Jesus is coming soon, so we rush and share the gospel, the good news to everybody. Wow. Uh, now, why is this so crucial in Japan? Uh, well, in Japan, uh, it's different. It's not U United States of America. Japan, less than 1% are Christians. Less than 1%. Wow. And it's not a small country, it's a big country. About <laughs> half the population of US literally under in the state of California. <laughs> wow. So that's, uh, that's Japan. <laughs> and so you were, you were telling me that Tokyo yeah. is like the biggest metropolis in the world, is that Yes, like, yes. Correct? To Tokyo, um, there's roughly in the Tokyo area about 40 million people living in the Tokyo area. That's the biggest metropolitan area in the world. Wow. And I live there. That, that is huge. Now, so you said 1% one, 1 or less than 1%? Less than 1% are Christian. Are Christian. Yeah. How many would you say are Adventist? Now, st statistically, uh -huh. Adventists are less than 1% of the 1%, so 0.001%. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, the, so the, the, okay, before we even go any further into the youth rush and why the youth are rushing and all that <laughs> stuff, tell me about you and your background. Where did you grow up? Oh, okay. Um, I'm a third generation Japanese American. Uh, I grew up in Loma Linda, California. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the youngest of four siblings. Um, but you know, I actually, uh, my parents are not, were not Seventh-day Adventists, They're, they are now, but uh -huh. my mom comes from a very strong Catholic home, really? Catholic family. Okay. My dad comes from a, you know, a, basically a Sunday church. Um, mm -hmm. His father's a, a Sunday church minister, pastor. Okay. Um, so both of them, Sunday church, pastor, Protestant, Catholic, you know, but through a series of things, uh, my dad was uh, going to medical school okay. and his medical school closed down in Oklahoma. And then it closed down and he transferred to Loma Linda wow. and they accepted him. And that's how he got to know Adventism. And we went through the Adventist education system. And as all my siblings went through the school system, they decided to get baptized. Eventually my parents decided to get baptized. Wow. And so like your, so your dad embraced the, the Adventism mm -hmm. and then your mom followed after? Yes. He'd, okay. Yeah. Nice. But nice. the interesting thing is my dad later I found out, it, it, you know, it took both my parents, it took them about 15, 16 years to make a decision to get baptized after they went to Loma Linda. Okay. But my dad said, you know, he accepted the Seventh-day Adventist church like in a month, <laughs> but wow. he was waiting for my mom to make a decision. So they got baptized on the same day. Wow, wow, okay. So now let's transition because you got involved with Youth Rush, yes. right? As a student doing literature evangelism. Mm -hmm. How old were you then? Um, I first got involved with the Youth Rush program in California uh, when I was 16. Wow, 16 years old, 16 years. okay. And what, what was the typical age range? Um, the minimum age was 16. Was 16, yeah. wow, so you got in at the ground level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, great, 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 great. And this was in Southeastern California, Southeastern right? California conference. The conference, yeah. okay. And your life was changed, what took place? You know, um, so that year, um, 
my older three siblings, they first did Youth Rush, and their life changed, you know? They began to read their Bible in the morning. I was like, why are they reading the Bible in the morning? Why are they singing songs? Like, they look happy. Uh -huh. Okay, what's going on here? You know, and I decided to go to Youth Rush the following year, and oh, my life changed. You know, I learned the joy of service, you know, nice. joy of serving God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yes, it is. And what would a typical day look like for you at, at Youth Rush? And during Youth Rush, I mean, uh, we all, about 20 young people, stay in churches in sleeping bags for 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. We have morning worship together. We do training. Like, we, we train. We get trained by young leaders how to knock on doors, how to talk about the books. Uh -huh. We eat breakfast. We go out for eight hours or so, knock on doors, come back, sleep. And the next thing, same thing, uh, wow. Sunday through Thursday. And Friday, we do laundry and uh, clean the church and... Uh, something like that. And how have you seen lives transformed back then when you were 16? Like what, what stories do you have of lives being transformed oh. or any, any miracle stories that well, you have? Well, um, uh, you know, this lit especially this literature evangelism work, uh, I'll be honest, it's not an easy work. <laughs> okay. Knocking on strangers' house uh -huh. and telling them about Jesus. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, you meet friendly people, but you meet not so friendly people. <laughs> and yes. uh, you meet all kinds of people. Yeah. So it really kind of ch challenges your character, mm -hmm. challenges your attitude towards that. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I sure about this gospel? Am I sure about this Jesus Christ following him? You know, mm -hmm. it challenges me and uh, challenges everybody so uh, by end of the summer like our faith it's personalized mm, you know, we have strength, all, huh? all kinds of uh, experiences of answer to prayer you know I've had people I go to the door and right at the moment they're like oh I was just praying that someone will come you know they were just praying for God to help them I wow. met this one lady um, she was thinking about suicide and uh, she was crying out to God. And then right when she was crying out to God, I knocked on her door and I wow. sticked the book called Peace of the Storm. And she was like, this is an answer to prayer. You know? Wow. So those kind of experiences happen all the time. Yeah, yeah, which is absolutely amazing. I could see how that could strengthen your faith. Yes. For, for those of our viewers that don't know what literature evangelism uh, is, because I know you said that you knock on doors and all that stuff, but what is uh, literature evangelism? Uh, Literature evangelism, simply put, is using literature to do evangelism. Okay. Basically, using literature to share about the gospel, mm -hmm. share about Jesus Christ, share about the Bible. So do you hand these books out, or are you selling uh, these books, or how does that how Yes, does that um, for literature evangelism, of course, um, you can pass out free distribution, free mm -hmm. literature, but mm -hmm. uh, co-portering, the youth rush, yes. we go door to door, and we sell these books. Nice. And the reason we sell these books is, uh, when people pay for the books, they tend to cherish the books more. They mm -hmm. tend to actually read the books more uh -huh. because they are actually paying for it. Like, okay, I better read it. <laughs> yes, so, that, so they're, they see the value. Yes, uh -huh. yes, absolutely. And so your, your role as um, the project leader in the Japan Youth Rush, yes. what does that look like? like uh -huh. what, what's your day look like there? <laughs> oh, my day, uh, every day is an adventure. Um, uh, Basically, uh, Youth Rush did not exist in Japan when I went there. Um, it, 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 we started from zero, from scratch. Wow. Um, and, you know, I was there and I prayed, how can we recruit young people? How can we start this program? So a lot of communication, a lot of recruiting, mm -hmm. and uh, figuring out how to knock on doors in Japan, yes. <laughs> in a secular country in Japan, you know. How did you rec recruit the young people? Okay, um, over in Japan, um, you know, as mentioned, very few Christians. And in fact, the average church in Japan, last time I uh, checked, was 69 years old. Uh, so you don't have many young people in Whoa, Japan. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> the average age yes. was 69 yeah. years old? Yeah, not many. Uh, so, But we have a lot of faithful 90-year-olds and 80-year-olds <laughs> still active in the church. <laughs> well, that's a blessing. <laughs> that's a blessing. Yeah. But, man, so there's not a lot of young people. But there are a lot of young people in Japan. In Japan, yes. But just not in the not church. Not in the church, Okay, yeah. and that's where we want them to be, yes, in the church. that's what we need. So it must have been an uphill battle, a challenge mm. to get these young people involved. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of prayer involved. Mm. Yes, a lot of prayer. Our first, in fact, our very first Youth First program, uh, we, we had seven young people. Okay. Just seven, like, kind of like the seven samurais, but seven young people. But uh -huh. uh, 
through their testimonies, through their experiences, they brought their friends and they brought their friends. So through that, it's been expanding. In the last two years we've been doing, we had over 100 young people go through this program. Wow, yeah. 100 over young 100. people. Over 100, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, well, God I, is good. Yeah. Yes, he is. And I can only imagine how lives have been transformed um, because they answered the call that mm -hmm. God has placed on their lives. Yes. You know, we have a, well, we have a couple video roles, well, two videos, mm. um, but I want to show this this first one. It's, it's a shorter one. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to that right now. Okay. That looks intense. Oh. <laughs> that looks intense. Huh? Yeah, it's a little bit intense. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a sense of urgency. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Urgency. So going out and knocking on the doors, distributing the uh, literature yes. and all that stuff. Um, now, in the States, in, in the U.S., you went to school for theology, correct? Wow. I studied theology for, for a year okay. um, at Southern University. Mm -hmm. um, but while I was there, I, uh, I, lo I loved reading. I was reading the books called The Publishing Ministry, Cole Porter Ministry, mm -hmm. Book Education. As I was reading, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I better get involved in publishing work, yes. literature work. And yes. I decided to um, uh, quit theology and go to a Bible college called Souls West. Wow. And it's a, a Bible college emphasizing literature evangelism. Wow. And what are some of the other things that they, they teach there? Um, they also teach you how to be a Bible worker, okay. um, leadership. The Souls West, um, S-O-U-L-S West, um, Seventh-day Adventist Outreach Leadership School. So it emphasizes leadership. Um, it's a college where they try to train young leaders. So we have classes on leadership, literature evangelism work, and Bible work. Nice. And so upon completion of that program, did you, you receive a call from Japan uh, Union? Conference? After that, uh, we, uh, I Bible worked for one year Okay. Uh, over here in California, mm -hmm. uh, one year. And then as I was doing Bible work there, I got a call from Japan Union okay. asking, hey, can you implement the things you learned at Souls West? Uh, can you start Youth Fresh? Can you uh, help with the youth church here and discipleship? Wow. I was like, oh, hold on. Okay, yeah. okay. And, yeah. and I prayed and went. <laughs> Man, so they gave you a big project yeah. right out of the gate. Yes. But I'm sure God clearly equipped you to, yes. to, to take that on. Yeah, I mean, God, you know, one thing I, I learned from those experiences, God can use anybody. I mean, he used me. I was only 22 years old when I received the call. 22 yeah. years old. God. See, now that's, and that's inspiring because you are a young man. How old are you now? I'm 25 right now. 25, 25. right now. And you're the project leader yes. um, over there. So that, I mean, it's, it's inspiring because no matter how young a person is, mm. that they can get involved mm. in ministry and should yes. get involved in ministry. Yes. And God has a calling on each one of our lives. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm glad that you answered yours, man. No. Glad that you answered yours. Um, we have some pictures. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take a look at the first picture, and mm. why don't you tell us a little bit about that picture? Okay. Oh, um, this picture is actually from Kagoshima. It's the uh, southernmost part of Japan. I mean, okay. the most southern part is Okinawa Islands, but at Kagoshima, um, we had, you know, about 25 young people for this program. And then uh, these are high school and college students. Wow. And uh, it was hot. We had really? the volcanoes there, so it's hot. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, uh, it was intense. Um, wow. And uh, the volcanoes, you know, uh -huh. right there. So sometimes the air wasn't the best. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. these guys ran door to door, mm -hmm. you know, shared the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, 
We had we had some good experiences. In fact, we sold a lot of great controversies. Oh there. wow! A lot of great controversies. For whatever reason, these young people they're like, I want to sell the great controversy. I want to yeah. sell. We gave worships on great controversy theme, and uh, I want to sell this book. And this one one girl, you know, uh, she she it was her first time doing youth rush, oh, wow. and her goal that day was like. I'm going to sell great controversy. I've been doing this for two weeks already. I haven't sold the great controversy. I'm going to sell the great controversy. Uh huh. I mean, she was, she was determined. Yeah, yeah, she was determined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that day she met a grandpa um, who went to an English school a long time ago, run by Adventist uh, mm -hmm. church a um, long time ago. He's like, oh, Adventist, okay. And then they began to converse and she showed the great controversy, but he showed no interest. Like, ah, Christianity, it's, it doesn't make sense. Buddhism make more sense. Wow. That's, that's what, what he said. That's what he said. Uh -huh. it, it turned her on. She said, hold on, hold on, Grandpa. And she began to talk about the origin of sin, creation, everything. And the Grandpa's wow. like, okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. I'll buy this book and I'll read it. Wow. And that was the story. Yeah. Praise the Lord that yeah. she was persistent yeah. and didn't give up yeah. on the Grandpa. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That is amazing. What are some other stories that you have? Um, you know, there's other experiences like, um, not in Kagoshima. Uh, we'll go down south more. How about ok Okinawa? In Okinawa, okay. we had um, 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 there. You know, it's an island. Uh huh. You know? And um, this one uh, girl, I went door to door with this one student. You mm -hmm. know, because uh, I, I go door to door with different students, make uh -huh. sure they're. Uh, okay, knocking on doors, make sure they're yes. handing the books right. And, you know, uh -huh. um, we met this grandma, you know, and then uh, uh, she, she wasn't Christian, of course. You know, at the end of the conversation, she was really touched, especially when we prayed for her. Mm -hmm. She was really touched. Mm -hmm. It was her first Christian prayer ever. She's like, uh, when we offered to pray, she was like, well, is it okay here? It's like, yeah, right here, right now, okay. And then she was touched and she said, hold on. She went to her kitchen and she got, Three mochi, you know, these are rice cakes. Three mochi yeah. and some three drinks, uh -huh. plum juice, plum juice drinks. I was like, oh, oh well, it's fine. Two's fine. Just us two. He's like, no, no, no. This is for your God. Serve it to your God. I was like, oh, it's a Japanese uh, custom okay. where you serve food to the God. So I was like, uh, serve it to your God. But, okay. but bottom line, you know, she was thankful for the prayer and the interactions. I'm sure uh -huh. something touched her. So. Oh, well, well, praise the Lord. I'm yeah. glad she was touched by yeah. you sharing. You know, we have some more pictures. I yeah. want to go through those okay. too. Um, let's take a look at this next picture and tell us what's going on there. Ah, um, this one actually, they're holding a little certificate. That's actually a certificate, uh, one year in mission. Um, it's an initiative by General Conference right now, uh, okay. division where young people dedicate one year uh, doing ministry or doing, serving God. Wow. And uh, for Japan, mm -hmm. Youth Rush is part of one year ministry. What that means is Youth Rush program itself is only three weeks. Okay. We have three week blitzes, three week okay. literature, door to door programs, February, March, July, August, and September, five times a year. Okay. And uh, some people, join all five times. Some mm -hmm. people are just join one or two. Mm -hmm. It depends on their school schedule. But our goal is after they do Youth Rush, we encourage them to be part of the local church. We encourage them wherever they go to serve the Lord. Yeah. Doesn't, they don't need to knock on doors. Yeah. They have all the doors they can knock on, doors of their friends' hearts, you know, yes. they, they can knock on their yeah. hearts, you know. That's, so we encourage them, we equip them how to give Bible studies, how to start small groups. So in that sense, nice. we try to make this youth rush a beginning, a starting point for yeah, them. Yeah, so it's not the, it's not the ending, it's just no, the beginning. No. Yes, the beginning. Where they come and get equipped, yes. and then they go out to all of their communities yes, yes. and share, share yes. the gospel. Uh -huh. um, let's look at our next picture and see what we've got here. Ah, uh, this is um, Kobe, um, Kobe uh, Adventist Church. Um, here we, um, they looked very relaxed, happy. Uh, uh -huh. This program, oh man, they, they got along very well, you know. They, they had a really good time. Um, and I, I've heard from the leaders there, you know, um, they uh, really had a really good prayer life. Mm. 
they took time praying together, mm -hmm. really, morning and evening. The group prayed together. They really valued the importance of prayer. And these participants that went through this program, they're like, it's the first time I've ever prayed like this. Wow. It's like, wow, yeah. prayer is powerful. Yeah. And, and so how did they see prayers answered? Do you have any stories yes, of how um, all the prayers and, and answered? The area there, I'll be honest, it, it wasn't the easiest area. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. We had all kinds of religions, you name okay. it, all kinds of religions knocking on the do doors of that region. Yes, yes. So the moment we knock, they're not very open. Yeah, yeah, they're not <laughs> so, receptive to no, it. No, right not away. very receptive. Yeah. So it was difficult. So without prayer, you cannot knock on those areas. And mm. it, it's not a mm -hmm. small village, it's a v major town, Kobe. And so they really prayed and they had some powerful divine appointments. Uh, powerful divine appointments where they meet people that are not Christians, mm -hmm. uh, that ask for Christian literature, that ask for Bible studies, that ask for those literatures. So yeah. it was amazing. Nice, nice, man. And have you seen like, have you seen the church grow mm. as a re like? Okay, let's let's say you go to Okinawa mm. or um, you go to some of these other areas. Have you seen uh, growth within the church as a result of reaching out to these oh, communities? Very good question. Um, Youth Rush, the, there's several purpose for this literature evangelism program, mm -hmm. especially student literature evangelism program. Uh, one is, uh, of, uh, of course, evangelism. Mm -hmm. We uh, share the gospel. It's like planting seeds. Yes. Uh, but it's very, very rare for someone to accept the uh, gospel immediately. Mm -hmm. It's very rare, for example, I knock on door and they immediately say, oh, I accept this, let me get baptized. It's very rare for that to happen, mm -hmm. but it happens uh -huh. once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the reason for this work is to train the young people mm -hmm. to have them get to know Jesus Christ on a personal level by working mm -hmm. for the Lord. But uh, to answer your question, yes, um, we have had Bible study interests. Okay. Um, and also we have had uh, church members that haven't been going to church for a long time, we visit the neighborhood and they started nice. coming. They started coming. So um, these long time uh, absent church members uh -huh. started coming and stuff. And um, just uh, recently at this one church, uh, we had eight people uh, throughout the course of the program, by eight Bible study interests, okay? Wow. These are all non-Christian yeah. non -Christian people signing up for personal Bible study. And the pastor of the church mm -hmm. decided to follow up on all those studies. But I appreciate, what I appreciate about the pastor, he didn't follow up on, his, on, on him uh, on, alone. Yeah. He asked the church members. <laughs> he brought four nice. church members. He said, okay, you're giving Bible study to this person, this person. <laughs> yeah. And he trained the church members. And by God's grace, out of the eight, five of them are still studying the Bible. Uh, like wow. they are studying the Bible. These are uh, interests we gained from knocking on doors. Wow. So Praise the Lord. So the seed was planted. The Holy Spirit watered that seed. Yes. And, and drew people into oh. the church and and I'm happy that the pastor followed up. I yeah. mean that's that's so important because yes. you can go into the community mm. but there has to be that follow up. Yes. That's that there is important. We have another picture. Let's look at this picture and and see um, what's going on in, in this particular setting. Ah, oh, actually this is a picture of Okinawa. Oh, this is Okinawa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me share one more story about Okinawa. Okay. Um, one of the guys there actually um uh, he uh, was a theology major. Mm -hmm. um, he knocked on this door and he, he met this uh, young person. Uh, they conversed, they conversed, and he decided to uh, invite the young person to church. Mm -hmm. And um, that very Saturday, the young person came to church. Wow. And to this day, that young person keeps coming to church every week and wow. he's connected to the local church. So those things happen too. It's quite interesting. And Okinawa, actually, um, in the last couple of years, we've been there twice, same mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is repetition deepens impression. Amen. Like, yes, um, yes. it really does. Like, we had this, these people like, hey, you guys came last time. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, you came again. Last time, I didn't buy anything, but hey, since you came, I'm going to buy again. Or this one family, um, uh, I guess... Um, this, uh, this family, this lady, uh, mm -hmm. 
she bought a vegetarian cookbook mm -hmm. and a little health book, okay, mm -hmm. uh, from this guy. And she really enjoyed those books. A year passed, and uh, this guy came again, knocked on the same door, and she was like, I recognize you. Oh, I recognize you. And then they, they converse, and she decided to buy The Great Controversy and The Desire of Ages. Wow. Wow. So she got those, those yeah. two books. Those are powerful books. Powerful too. books. Yeah. Um, we have a video. Okay. Okay. We have a video roll with testimonies. It's in Japanese. Okay. But there's, there's English uh, mm. subtitles. Powerful video. Let's check that out. So I, I saw in that video where there were, you know, several testimonies oh. about people buying books, yeah. um, the love of Christ being mm. shared with them, and, and prayers that took mm. place, and all of that stuff. Um, shows again why literature evangelism is so important. Mm. Did you grow up speaking Japanese? Um, you know, uh, my mom uh, made a rule in in the house in in our homes mm -hmm. that we speak. Japanese at home. So conversational, like, hey, it's breakfast time, or okay. hey, it's time to eat, or time okay. to clean up. Those conversational mm -hmm. Japanese, um, yeah, I grew up learning. Uh -huh. But reading and writing is a whole different thing. And uh, I mean, I live, I grew up in California. So yeah. outside of my home, it's English yeah, <laughs> or and, Spanish. And, <laughs> and, and so that's, the, yeah, that's why I was asking that question, because yeah. now you're in Japan. Yes. 
and where you have to be fluent in the language, I would imagine, mm. reading and writing, oh, yes, especially yes. when you're going out to do literature yeah, evangelism. Yeah. So how did you how did you learn that and how long did oh, it take you to learn? You know, that? I think that's part of God's miracle or God's leading. Mm -hmm. um, when I went there, I was like, okay, if I'm going to work here, especially if I'm going to deal with books, I better know how to read and write. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I prayed. All I did was I memorized a lot of Bible verses in English and Japanese. So same verses I memorized, memorized, memorized. Wow. And I learned the writing system, practice, practice, morning to evening. All I did was practice, 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 practice. And after a month, I was able to read and write. And, uh, and um, I, I, after these couple of years, now I translate different materials from Japanese to English or English to Japanese, vice versa. And uh, wow. we just, pub we just uh, published one of the books I translated. So God is good. Wow, that is amazing. After a month, and you were, you were using the Word of God, like you were reading the Bible in English and then reading it in Japanese. Yes, yes. Same and, places, yeah. Wow, and you learned how to read and write. Yeah. And you know, because that's amazing. It's, it's amazing. You know, like, it's a different story. Like, oh, it's breakfast time or it's time to clean up. Those yes. are easy Japanese, yes. but it's a different story when you preach the word. You, yeah. know? you have yeah. to use different words. So I was like, how am I going to preach in Japanese? I better memorize the Bible. Amen. So that's what Amen. happened. And uh, by God's grace, I can preach in Japanese as well. Yes, that is amazing. What other stories do you have mm. from your time in Japan? Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories, mm -hmm. um, experiences. I mean, just the fact that we have this youth search program in Japan is a story itself. I mean, um, but uh, this one thing uh, we do. Um, so what, what, what am I doing outside of Youth Rush? You know, February, March, July, August, mm -hmm. we have the programs, Youth Rush programs. During those times, well, uh, you know, I'm with the young people. Yes. But outside of those times, you know, we plan for the next event or we recruit or we make materials. We uh, decide, choose and vote and help publish the books that we use at Doors. Wow. Uh, we also, I'm involved with... Uh, Youth Church in Tokyo, okay. um, Setagaya Youth Church. Uh, it's in Tokyo. It was actually part of the 13th Sabbath School offering uh, uh, last uh, last quarter. Uh, okay. Uh, and, okay. Uh, and um, it's a church plant. We had less than 10 people there a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, about five active church members. Um, the church was ready to close down. You know, uh, they they just did not have enough manpower to keep the church going. Mm -hmm. you know, every week. They had a TV screen and they watched different preachers preach on the TV screen. That was their worship okay. service. Okay. You know, they were, they were ready to close down, but that's when the union president said, hold on, uh -huh. we're going to turn this into a youth church. Nice. And so myself and another pastor and his family came and we went there and God worked. God worked. And we have over 30 people every week going through, uh, going to that church. We have a lot of young people. And what I like about this church, uh -huh. what I like about this church, about half the people that come to church are not Adventists. Really? Yeah, not, some of them are not Christians. Wow. Yeah, so it's every week is like an outreach. It's like an evangelistic yeah. series. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're hearing this precious message yeah. for the first time yeah. in their lives, yeah. some of them. That's, that's nice. That's so amazing. We have. It's a small church, very small church, you know, 30 people or so, mm -hmm. sometimes 40, sometimes 50, very mm -hmm. small church. But we have a lot of young people, kids coming in, yeah. you know, and uh, it's a nice opportunity yeah. right there in Tokyo. Absolutely. What's your vision for Youth Rush Japan? Uh, the vision for Youth Rush Japan, um, of course, uh, I've been there three years now, you okay. know, and... The vision is for this ministry to keep going, continuing uh -huh. until Jesus comes, Amen. until probation closes, keep knocking on doors, Amen. you know. In order for that to happen, we need to train young people to become leaders. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm, uh, we're mentoring young leaders, college students, even high school students mm -hmm. to let them know, hey, you guys are called to be leaders. Yes. So yes. we teach them what it means to be a leader, what's the expectations, and we give them opportunities during the program. Hey, mm -hmm. you help me lead this program, mm -hmm. right? You help me train the young people, those mm -hmm. kind of things. And the vision is to have youth fresh programs all over Japan. 
nice. and strong, and not just in Japan, mm -hmm. but where I am at, you know, it's North Asia Pacific Division. We okay. have China, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Japan, and Mongolia, and all those countries. We want youth versus Mongolia, youth versus Korea, youth versus China, youth wow. versus Taiwan. That's the vision. Yes. And we need young people to be on fire. So what we need is we need young people uh, to learn Chinese, mm -hmm. <laughs> learn Korean. Maybe some of you who are watching, you know, uh, uh -huh. who have experience in youth Russia, who have experience in literature work, mm -hmm. learn Korean, learn Chinese, learn Korea, uh, Taiwan, learn uh, Mongolian, you know, le yeah. learn those languages. And uh, maybe God is calling you to start youth first there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, because this gospel is to go yes. into all the yes. world. <laughs> Absolutely. So what are some leadership principles mm. um, that you share with these kids and what are some leadership principles mm. that you could share with our viewers okay um of course um uh, leadership principles there are very uh, d different things that we cover mm -hmm. um and a lot of the things i actually based it on the things i learned at souls west and okay. i made a little manual in japanese and pass it out but uh, as christian leaders you know i think the most important thing that I encourage, I, I really emphasize this, get to know the Bible, mm -hmm. get to know the Bible, learn how to study the Bible, give Bible studies. I really, I even encourage them, hey, memorize Bible verses, that will help you. Mm -hmm. So their personal walk with God, you know, mm -hmm. you can't lead someone if you don't have a personal walk with God. Yes. So yeah. Start walking with God and tell, encourage others, hey, let's walk together. That's leader, yes. that's leadership. You start walking and encourage others to start walking. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, you know, um, we also uh, teach them the value of health message. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of the young people, they don't understand the importance of health. They, oh, really? A pork? Oh, really? Oh, th those are unclean? Oh, okay. You know, yeah, oh, alcohol yeah. is not good? Okay, okay. You know, so those uh -huh. health messages are also important. So we teach d different uh, principles like that. And so uh, just to recap a little bit of what you're saying so basically lead by example lead by example okay you know how can you lead people to Christ if you don't know them for yourself mm. you know how, you got to study your word before you can teach the word uh, yes study study God's word before you can yeah. teach his word um, and you have to take care of yourself yeah. you know your health uh -huh. Otherwise, you won't be healthy enough yes. to be a leader for other yes. people. Um, you know, I have an uncle, oh. uh, un my uncle Arthur. Uncle a Arthur. And uncle Arthur, he would he would always say, you know, you don't lead where you don't go, and you don't teach what you don't know. Oh. Um, and that stuck with me over the years. Wow. You know, how can you teach somebody something that you don't know and that you don't really put into practice, mm. and you don't lead where you don't go? You know, you don't tell somebody to do something that you wouldn't even do yourself. Uh. Um, so that really stuck with me. And over the years, you know, my mom teaching me about, you know, having integrity, uh. you know, and all these other, other things that I'm sure that you guys yes. are teaching over yes. there, you know, yes. people have to operate with integrity and stuff like that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I, I forgot to mention, uh, the most important uh, mm -hmm. leadership principle, in my opinion, is, oh, it can be summarized in few few words is trust God mm -hmm. and dream big. Okay. And that's it. You know, okay. trust God and dream big. You know, Proverbs uh -huh. 3, verse 5 through 7, the famous passes, you know, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge mm -hmm. him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. You know, that's it. That's the principle right there. Amen. Trust God and dream big, you know. Yeah. When and clearly you you trusted God because you moved to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you're too, you're actively involved in the youth rush, and you know you're the project leader of the youth rush. How did you discover God's will, His plan, and His purpose for your life? Mm. You know, um, I uh, this 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 uh, explanation is still stuck in my mind to this day, mm -hmm. but God. Uh, leads us step at a time. You know, the famous verse, Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. You know, it's a lamp. You know, lamp doesn't sh brighten the whole room up. It steps a step at a time, step at a time. So um, I, I just step at a time. I read the Bible, study the Bible, and I ask God, hey, where do you need me? Where is the work at? Where is the harvest at? I said, all right, there, 
I'm going there step at a time. So I asked God, where can you use me the most? Mm -hmm. Where are you happy the most? You know, yes. I just go where the need is. Amen. And clearly Japan, less than 1% is Christian. So there's a huge need. Yeah. Harvest is great, but the laborers are few. You absolutely. Now, do your parents live in Japan? My parents actually live in California. Oh, they live in yeah. California. Okay. Yeah. How often do you get to see them? Um, well, I uh, see them once a year or so. Okay. Yeah, once a year. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure they're proud of you and what you're doing over there in Japan. They seem to be happy. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So what's next for you with Youth Rush? Um, with Youth Rush, um, right now, you know, we have, we, we started out with just one program, you mm -hmm. know, but we're increasing it to two simultaneous, three simultaneous programs. Uh, mm -hmm. We're training the leaders. So uh, our next step for Youth Rush Japan is keep increasing those programs mm -hmm. and then also work together with the local church. We actually have an initiative pro project called All Rush Japan. Not Old Rush, but All Rush, A-L-L. All -L. Rush, okay. And, and that, because after we have Youth Rush programs, these church members and other people are like, how can I get involved? I want mm. to get involved. It's like, yes, we all need to get involved. Absolutely. So All Rush Japan is basically an evangelism team at the local church level mm. that follow up, follows up on the interest that we find during Youth Rush. Right. Uh, they don't necessarily knock on doors. Some of them will write letters uh -huh. to their friends or family. They, they will pray, they will cook, whatever. Yes. Whatever they can, they all rush together and share the gospel. Yes. So this is, in other words, this is an all-inclusive Yes. Rush. Yes. There's, you know, no matter the age. Yes. Or anything no. Like that, oh, all everybody. Rush. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, what does that look like? So they're writing letters. They don't knock on doors. They they what, knock on. Oh, doors. Oh, they do knock on. But doors. not eight hours a day. Okay. You know, they knock on doors a couple hours here and there. Uh, but they don't run. <laughs> they gotcha. take it easy. A slower pace, a little bit, especially with yeah. the average age yes, being yes, 69 yes. Yeah. And, and up. Okay. Well, we still have two pictures left. Okay. I want to take a look at one of these pictures. Okay. And then, of course, you can talk about what's going on in this picture. Okay. And then we'll go to the next one. Okay. Um, so what's, what's taking place here? Okay. Oh, this one actually a picture. We just saw uh, uh, the video, but... Um, this one is actually all high school students. Mm -hmm. um, it was a program we had in, over in a prefecture called Saitama, uh, next to Tokyo. Okay. To Tokyo. Um, but here, yeah, we had a lot of energy, lots of energy. It's called Saitam Saitama? Saitama, yeah. Saitama. Saitama. Oh, nice. So they were, they were very energetic. Yeah, very energetic. Very enthusiastic, very enthusiastic about spreading the gospel. Yes. Nice, nice. Nice. Let's take a look at our next picture and see what, what's going oh, on. Oh, this is actually a picture of the leader uh, candidates. These are young people that we selected out of the 100 plus young people that went through these programs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we sat down, prayed and said, hey, these guys, let's train them, encourage them to be leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, not all of them will be leaders, yes. but we give them opportunities to become leaders. Nice, and to prove themselves. Yes. That's great, that is great. And that's... they're holding out the books that they were holding out. That's the book that uh, I translated together with a fellow friend. Wow. That's amazing. You know, it's great that you're, you're providing them with leadership opportunities. Yeah. So it's a chance for them to prove themselves, to grow, mm -hmm. and all of those things. Um, so what qualities do you look for when you guys are selecting uh, leaders? Okay. Um, of course, one of the quality or experiences, they have to experience Youth Rush Japan. Uh, that, that's mm -hmm. a given, you know. Mm -hmm. And another one is we're not necessarily looking for the highest seller, you know, yeah. who can sell the most number. Not, not, not necessarily that, mm -hmm. but it, hard work ethic. Yeah. Do they work hard even if they sell or don't sell? Mm -hmm. or do they have positive attitude? That's important. We really look, do they have a positive attitude? Mm -hmm. And are they trusting God? You know, mm -hmm. that, that's important. Trust God and dream big. So those two basically really gotcha. hone in on that. Gotcha. Those, those are crucial. Yeah. What are some of your needs for Youth Rush Japan? What are some of your needs? Mm. Is, is it finances? Is it mm. volunteers? Is it, I mean, what, what is it? You know, the biggest need, mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, financially, things are moving forward. That union is on board and, you know, we're moving forward. Um, but 
the most biggest need is we desperately need more young people. Mm. You know, the recruiting pool is small. Yes. <laughs> so we need a miracle. We need a miracle where there's hundreds and thousands of young people that join the church, or perhaps maybe people that are not Japanese, young people that are not, not Japanese. Yeah. Uh, and consider going to Japan and attend the universities and colleges there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and during uh -huh. breaks, you can do Youth Rush Japan. Yeah. <laughs> That's an option too. Yeah. Or, or you could just have missionaries come from the United oh, yes. States or That's wherever around yes. the world to go to Japan yes. and, and participate in Youth Rush. That would be correct? good too, yeah. Nice. Um, just uh, be ready to learn the language. <laughs> yes, yes. And are there people there to help them? Like if, if someone wants to go to Youth Rush, mm. Is there somebody that can help them learn the language? You know, at this point, we don't have a solid system or structure. That's something we definitely want to create in the future. Mm -hmm. But so uh, right at this time, you just got to study hard on yourself and uh -huh. memorize those words. Well, the bless the good thing is, is one, they can either do it how you did it yeah. with a Japanese Bible uh -huh. and a Bible that's in English. Yes. And they can take a look at the scriptures. Yes or they can go online. Nowadays we have access to so oh, much information at our fingertips yes. that they can learn mm -hmm. online as well if they want to participate. Yes. Are there housing opportunities over there? Housing Is there somebody they can stay with if they were yeah. to go? I think um, there are uh, different churches and okay. also the, I think the best way is to enroll in one of the uni public universities or colleges. Okay. You can do campus ministry and youth for us together. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, look, we are, our time is almost up. This is, this is crazy how fast it went by. We're going to go to your address roll and uh, tell people how they can get in contact mm -hmm. with you. The Lord is blessing the efforts of young people in Japan who are doing literature evangelism, searching for souls who are open and eager to find Jesus Christ. Their most pressing need is for more young people to join them in this effort. So if you would like to come to Japan, prepared to learn the language and witness for Christ at the same time, then Youth Rush Japan would like to hear from you. Daniel's email is youthrushjapan at adventist.jp. That's Youth Rush Japan at Adventist.jp. Wow, our time is just about gone. This program went by so fast. Um, you have me excited about Youth Rush. I hope that I can make it to Japan at some point. And, and actually see Youth Rush Japan mm. in action mm. um, and maybe help out in some way. I, oh. you, know, you might have to translate one, <laughs> but <laughs> we can figure that yes, out. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> Absolutely. What advice do you have for that young person that's at home mm. saying, you know, they see you as the project leader of the Youth Rush Japan mm. and they're wondering what God has in store mm. for their life. Mm. What advice do you have for that young person? Mm. Well, um, the advice, I've mentioned it already, but simply put, trust God and dream big. That's it. Trust God and dream big. You see, God can use anybody. God can use anybody. Just trust him and dream big. Go big and we want to go home. That's it. <laughs> you know? And uh, also regarding Youth Rush, you know, we, the Youth Rush program started here in North America. So if you have the opportunity, go to your local youth rush programs here in North America, experience that literature work, and God will work on your heart. Amen. Amen. You know, it's often said that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call, uh, which is so important, yes. and which is what I hear you saying. Yes. Because, you know, we were talking prior to this program, mm. and that's what came across to yes. me, too. Um, I just want to thank you for coming on oh, and, and no, sharing thank you very with us, much. man, yes. and, and your passion and your enthusiasm oh. for the Lord and, mm. and the work that you're doing over mm. there in Japan. And I want to thank you for joining us. This has been an amazing program. I hope it's been a blessing to you and that you get involved in some sort of ministry. God bless you.